Now, another learning was, I'm going to use Tony Robbins because he explains it very well. Because I was explaining to Ben, I'm like, oh, dude, it's like you're not even in the fire. And I said, it's like, you know, it's like football team coming in. Okay, 33 drive, on two, on two, ready, break. I go, so you're not even, in the, you're like out there. Like, where do you, come on, let's go, right? And so Ben was like, well, I'm not good enough yet. And I, don't, I go, Ben, if you've got the techniques down, you, but you're not applying them in real life, okay? So what I said is, you might get your ass kicked thinking, oh, I just totally suck. My technique is zero and they're like at a 10, when actually it's just a little bit off. And I'm talking 1% of 1% off, just the tiniest bit. And Tony Robbins uses a perfect metaphor. He's got a video on YouTube about golfing. And he says, you know, one day, he goes, if you're a golfer, you know, some days, boom, no matter what you hit, it goes right where you want it to go. You're just in the zone. He goes, but then there's those days, and no matter how hard you try, that fucking ball, zoom. And if you've ever golfed before and you hit the ball just a little bit off and the club doesn't strike it just right, it gets a spin like a curveball, and it will curve way out there, right? Like, a, what's that considered? 90 degrees, right? Yeah, 90 degrees. And I, I remember when I golfed, my brother was a golf pro. And so when I was a kid, he was teaching me how to golf, and we used to go out to uh, Green Lakes Golf Course um, and uh, in Wisconsin. And uh, I remember this one time, this ball just, and I was like, fuck, you know, it's like, no matter how hard I try, and I was the one that always kicked all the kids' asses, but this one day, it just, zoom, now, so Tony Robbins' video said, his instructor was kind of laughing at him, he goes, having a shitty day, and Tony's like, fuck out, he goes, well, actually, you're just a little bit off, just a micro, not even a, a, a tenth of a percent, and the guy, Tony goes, you could have fooled me, because the ball's, now, here's the thing. Sometimes the results in life make you look like you're 90 degrees off course, like you're just totally, your mechanics or your techniques are totally off. But usually it's just a little shift and boom, you're right on track and you're, you're sinking them, right? So he told Tony, he goes, actually, you're just barely twisting the head, just, a, just not even a centimeter, it's not even a millimeter. And that little bit is just shafting it off, off to the side. And so he got Tony to adjust, to just adjust that little, not even, not even about that much. And boom, he was sitting him straight down the fairway again. And that is why you hire a coach. Have you learned that from me? Have you had these experiences where we make the tiniest little shift and boom, all of a sudden you see things differently? Yeah. Okay. We're going to say something? Sometimes, sometimes it felt like. All right. When I first got into it, it felt up. like it was going to take me. When I first got into it, I felt like it was going to take me. I even said it in one of the videos that it was going to take me 10 years to be as good as you or even half as good as you. But going through the course and just, just learning from you more and more, it's like it's just a little bit. It's just a little bit. It's like the goal that seems so big is really not that far. It's, it's in the minutiae. So what I told him today was, it's, here, actually get over here, you're going way out. So the goal, it, what I told him is, okay, and I said, you know, you're not like, you're not like trying to look for, you know, how did you do that? Because you're like always waiting out here, so you're not going to see it, and you're not even going to know what to ask for. An example was in wrestling. Uh, high school wrestling, we were so like, we wanted to win the state championship, so when you're pushing yourself, like that, you're looking for every little thing. Like, and I go, man, it's this guy in this other team from another city. Go, how do you do that? You make it look so fucking easy. He goes, well, dude. He goes, look at the way you're doing. It. I'm like, what? I do it exactly. Like that. He goes, no, you don't. He goes, you put your arm out. It's on, it was on the switch. He goes, but and he showed me this one little thing. He goes, your hands like that. He goes, but my hands like this, and I cup it, and I just twist it over. I go, yeah, it looks like you did. He goes, Mike, do it. Do it on me. And I was like, oh, that was freaking easy. Because to me, it's like it felt like I had to bench like 300 pounds to get the guy over. And for him, it's like five pounds. He goes, it literally, it's like a five, 15 pound technique. Whoop, super easy. And that's what I'm telling you. A lot of coaches out there don't have that ability to see the minutia. I don't know why I'm like that. Maybe it's because competing in sports from the age of five, year, four and a half years on. But I can work with a professional athlete, and I can watch him in front of the coach go, oh, I see what he's not getting you to do. Because a lot of coaches, yeah, you're throwing the jab, you're making it stiff, but you're not turning it over. It's just that little tiny bit. Your coach has to be able to see you do that in practice and in the ring. He's like, God damn it, you're not turning it over. Turn it over. Because a lot of times it's like a good jab, but they don't turn it over all the way. And this hand will be here and not here. All these little minutiae things, when you can see the tiniest little shift, then you're going to change, and then you're going to get the results. So overall, what am I saying in this segment? And I'll repeat it if you didn't quite get it or if you can't put it in the words. 
it's your goal is really not that far off. It's just a yes. little tiny thing. You'll you'll get there faster than you think you can. Yes, that's what I'm saying. Your life has changed massively in the last 90, mm. 98 days, whatever, 100 days. Massively. Huge. Because we did start to work and then we had a separation for a while. But now that we've came back and you're now you're doing this stuff, he's, he, he moved out. He's got his own place. He's got two raises. He's, he's about to buy a brand new car and on and on. And he's also looking for an executive of job now. So what I'm trying to say is in life, it's learning the littlest thing. It's, it's like I call it shifting perspectives and stepping into your power. It's just that little shift today. When you learn, instead of hiding over here, yeah. that this is where the fear is, the chaos, versus step into it. So, so did you see that once I stepped into it and I got the conversation rolling, did you see how, how fun I just was, blah, 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 just like I'd known the girls for 10 years. We walked in and we were both nervous, but you, you went in there and then you were totally calm. I backed away and I got even more nervous. And that understanding right there was... When I taught this to you here, we always sit at the table there when I teach him. Go ahead. It was like, wait, are you saying that if I back away, I'm more scared? And if you go well, in, what you're less scared? Well, That's... What, well, here's what I said. Okay, I said, what was your purpose for stepping back there? And basically, what did you say? I was to not be afraid. To not be afraid. To, be, to feel safer and calmer, right? Yeah. And I said, in reality, what really happened? I got even more afraid. And, and you're like, oh, now you're shaking afraid, right? Yeah. Right now, so do you see the contrast between oh fuck versus me going? Shh. That was step into it. That literally boggled my mind. I will boggle your mind some more. Hey, this is Mike Colleen. MikeColleen.com. Do you have anything else you want to say? Anything at all? I think that'll be it for this video. All right, guys. I hope that helped you. If there's one lesson you learn, step into it. Feel the fear. Do it anyways. But do it with every, it's like, it's like you're letting off the brakes and you're going to hear that words like let go, allow, let the brake. Cause when you put the brakes on, man, that's when you crash. Go ahead. Yeah. Honestly, I will, I will, we'll make another video after we go out and then I just fucking jump into it and we will show you the difference. And I'll tell you this, even if you fall on your face, get your ass kicked, get embarrassed, make, do a stupid move. That is when you really, really learn. Right? Yeah. I, I'm going to give an example. I think I put another video. I'm not sure. There was a, in high school, I was a starting guy at the middleweight division in, in wrestling. The other guy just broke his knee the year before, so he was coming back, etc. And they let him go to this tournament. I'm like, what are you talking about? I beat him in practice. Like, how can you, you know, he, you're supposed to do a, a competition. I forget what it's called, where, where like he has to beat you to earn that position. So what they did was they let him do it. Go to the tournament. I was pissed off. This is so fucking unfair. You know, you're supposed to do a challenge off or whatever it's called. And they didn't do it. And they just gave him the position to go to this tournament, which meant I couldn't go at my weight division, which I was a starting guy. And when he came back Monday, he had three matches on Saturday and two on Sunday. Two or three. I don't remember. Two or three on, sun, on Sunday. After six matches, he came back ten times better. And I was like, whoa. He was like practically beating me. I was like, what the hell happened? And, my, and the coach goes, Michael. You don't learn in practice. He goes, in practice, you learn a little tiny bit. You learn maybe 5% or 10% max. He goes, the 90% of the learning is in the combat. It's in the action. It's in the real life experience. Does that make sense? Yeah. And he thought, like cooking a turkey, one day after we practice and practice in private, bing, he's going to be Mr. Perfect walking out there, picking up on all the girls or making sales and getting an executive position. No, you have to step in the fire to get the real life experience. It's the real life experience that is where you learn. You know, it's it's a scary thing, but I'm to when I take the plunge, I think it'll be a fun thing. Even if even if I get fucking like we'll embarrassed laugh about or humiliated it. or this or that. You say it's, something stupid. Don't be surprised if the girls laugh with you. Oh, no, they realize you made yourself look like an idiot or said something like, "Oh shit, I can't believe you said that." You'd be surprised. People, as long as, here's the the cool thing, as long as you're in it, like in it to win it. When you make a mistake, people actually will applaud you. Like, dude, you got balls, man. You girls will do that too. They'll laugh with you. Like, oh, it's okay. Here, let me buy you a drink. And that's when the conversation starts. You get it? Yeah. Because we're in the calm of the storm. So if you spill your drink, people don't freak out. What happens when you spill your drink out here? When everyone's all nervous and anxiety. <laughs> Oh, fuck what you do yeah, all of a sudden a little thing is a big deal but in the calm of the storm 
It's just a spilled drink. You just said something stupid. You just made a mistake. It's no big deal. And the calm of the storm, in the eye of the tornado, in the eye of the hurricane where it's calm, spilt milk is just spilt milk. But when you're out here when the winds are whipping 120 miles an hour, when you spill milk, it goes all over everybody, and then it is a big deal. Do you get it? Yeah. Step into the storm. Step into the your power. I'll see you soon. This is Mike Colleen at MikeColleen.com. Anything? See you guys. All right. Peace out. Thank you.